Hello there, this is Alana Tucky, and this is going to be the lecture video for section 8.1, part 2 of Math 131. So in this section, we're going to be looking at the models and graphs for rational expressions. So let's start off with the basic form of a uh, rational expression 1 over x. What does that look like when we graph it? So you can see I've got a bunch of values in here that you might have noticed, but I can show you where they all came from using the calculator. Okay, so let me go right here. Okay, so if I go to the calculator and clear all this out, y equals, clear the any old equations out, and I just want to type in the new equation 1 over x, clear, there we go, 1 divided by x, like that. Or, I have to say, if you like the, the way that you can make it so a fraction actually looks like a fraction, so if you hit alpha f1 and hit numerator over denominator, that's number 1, n over d, and you could say 1 down arrow x, and then it looks just like you expect it to. All right, so now I'm going to go to the table real quick, and actually I want a bunch of the values in here. Oh, this is so nice. The new operating system shows you what they all are, and what I really want to know is what's happening at 2, at 1, at um, 0, and at negative 1, and so on. Okay, and there that you can see them. Oops, they're flying by. I pressed up a few too many times. There, I got it back. Okay, so here at negative 2, it goes to negative 1 half. At negative 1, it goes to negative 1. At 0, there's an error. And at 1, it's 1. At 2, it's a half. And then for interesting fun, I, I'm going to go to the table set. And instead of having my table go up by 1s, I'm going to try going up by 0 0.5, which is a half. I'm going to go back to the table, just so then I can see what happens. So there is negative 2, still going to negative 1 half. There's negative 1, goes to negative 1. But look at negative 1 half, it goes to negative 2. And then 0.5 goes to 2, and 1 goes to 1, and 2 goes to 0.5. And that's where I got the values from for my table, right? Okay, so 2 went to, excuse me, 2 went to a negative 1 half. Negative 1 went to 1, negative 1 half went to negative 2, and so on, all the way through. There we have it. And then I graph that, and if you look at the calculator, you can see what a graph of it's going to look like. So if I hit zoom 6, just to get kind of a regular, ordinary window, there's what it looks like. And what's happening here is it's so steep that the calculator basically gives up and doesn't draw it anymore. So it's very, very close to vertical, and calculators don't like drawing vertical lines because vertical lines are not functions, right? So it's not doing a very good job of it, but there you have it. If you want to make it match the actual one on our paper, then you'd say negative 8 to 8, and then negative 8 to 8. And that would match the actual paper graph that we have. And there you have it. All right, so that's what we graph right here. I put the three points in that I could find, right? Negative 2 goes to a half, negative 1 goes to negative 1, a half goes to negative 2, and so on. And then you kind of draw this curve. But you want to be really careful. You want to make sure that when you draw these lines, you don't have it cross that x-axis here. It doesn't cross the x-axis over here on the right. And it doesn't cross the y-axis either up here or down here. That's because these are lines are called asymptotes. In particular, I'm interested in the vertical asymptote. A vertical asymptote is a vertical line, which we learned in chapter 1. You write vertical lines in the form x equals a number, a, which correspond to the zeros of the denominator of the rational function when it's reduced to lowest terms. So for example, here I can't have 0. That's why the calculator is giving me an error there. Because if I have 0 in the denominator, I'd be dividing by 0, and that's a big no-no. And that's why x equals 0 is my vertical asymptote on that equation. All right, so now I have a few different functions graphed, and we want to look at what happens when you add or subtract a number at the end of it. So I've graphed them in black. That's the regular 1 over x. So see it right here. It's the same graph you were looking at in the problem above. And then I have 1 over x take away 3, and that shifts the graph down. So look what happens. From being the black graph here, it's gone down 1, 2, 3 spots. Hmm, interesting. And then over here, the blue one has been shifted up one, two spots. You can kind of see it over here at the 8 most easily. So you see how the 8 is almost 0, and there it's almost just a little bit above 2. 
whereas the red one's a little bit above negative 3. So how is k affecting the graphs? k shifts the graphs up and down. Up or down. Actually, let's be a little bit more explicit than that. If k is positive, let's see, k positive graph shifts up. k negative the graph shifts down, just like you expect. Okay, so in our examples we had positive 2 and negative 3. Positive 2, the blue one was shifted up, negative 3, the red one was shifted down. All right, what happens if we start messing around with a value inside the fraction with x? So here's 1 over x. That's the black one, same the one that we've looked at before. Then I have minus 3. That's the red one. I think, again, it's easy to see up here at the top at 8. So if you look at it, it's right close to 0. And then the minus 3 is shifted 1, 2, 3 to the right. And then the blue plus 2 is 2 to the left. And that's because h is always backwards in the formula. So make a note. Remember from chapter 6, h, oops, h is backwards in function, in the formula. Uh, I'll just say function, right? Just like we learned back in chapter 6. So let's think about this. For the red one, it's x minus 3, but the formula is x minus h. So if you see x minus 3, that means h is 3. h, so 1 over x minus 3 means that h is positive 3. It switches the sign. It's backwards in the function itself. I'm looking for that arrow. There it is. h equals positive 3, which means the graph shifted graph shifts right 3. See how the red one's to the right 3? You would think it would go left because you see a minus in there, but that's because h is always backwards in the function itself. So if you see a minus in the function, it means it's actually positive 3, which means it goes right. Positive means goes to the right. And then if you have 1 over x plus 2, That means that h is actually negative 2 because it's minus a minus 2. So h equals negative 2. And that's why the graph shifts left to 2. Okay? So be very, very, very careful with h. It's the same problem we were having with h back in chapter 6 with parabolas. That's still constant. That's why the blue one's left 2 and the red one's right 3. All right, so let's review some transformations, and this shouldn't sound, or this should sound very familiar to everybody because we did this exact same stuff with parabolas in chapter six. So what happens if you add a number? And I gave you a little example here. So one over x plus seven. That means your graph would shift up seven. So you could say plus k if you like, right? And then what if you had one over x minus k? That means your graph shifts down k, right? Whatever that is. Now these ones are the hard ones. So if it's 1 over x plus 4, that would mean that h is negative 4 because it always looks backwards in the function. And that means your graph shifts left whatever h was, which in our case was 4. And if you have 1 over x minus 3, that means that h was actually positive 3, which means your graph shifts right by whatever value h is, which in our case would be 3. So here, I'll just put these in just for the fun of it. Again, our ex it was a generic example. So example negative 4. There we go. And example would be 3. OK. All right, then that also means that we know the equation of the vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptote is going to happen when x is equal to h, whatever h is, because if you have x equals h, h take away h will make 0, right? So if you have h take away h, you'll have 0, and that's a big no-no. So it means your vertical asymptote has a form x equals h, because vertical lines have the form x equals a number. 
and that gives us how we're going to find vertical asymptotes in general. All right, vertical asymptotes, what you're going to do is reduce the rational expression to lowest terms. Then you find all values where the denominator equals 0. And the vertical asymptotes will be of the form x equals a. They'll look like x equals a number, like x equals 2 or x equals 7 or something like that. Another thing, do not graph the asymptotes as solid lines. They're not really part of the function. So for example, if you look back, I think the easiest one to see is this black one that we did originally. There's a vertical line in here, but I don't really graph it. Right? It's just part of that function. That function gets really close to that vertical line, but it never crosses it. That's what a vertical asymptote is for you. Then there may be other x values that are not in the domain of the original non-reduced function, but they won't make an asymptote. So there could be other things that you can't have in your domain. This is not a domain question we're asking here. It's an asymptote question. All right. So to find an asymptote, always reduce first. Right, that's what this says right here. Always do lowest terms. Okay, so we are going to find the vertical asymptotes of the following functions. So we have 5x over x cubed minus 2x squared minus 8x. Okay, so let's see. This would be, and I've got to reduce it first. That's your first step. So reduce. I'm going to put it right over here. Reduce. All right. So let's see here. This is equal to 5x over. Now there's a GCF in that denominator. I can take x out. That'll leave me x squared minus 2x minus 8. Okay. So this is, okay. Well, I can already see from here that the 5x and the x are going to cancel. Not the 5x, but the x part. This x and this x reduce, right? Because x divided by x makes 1. So that's 5 over, and then I just need to factor what's left. x minus 4, x plus 2, that'll work. Okay, so now the vertical asymptotes, and now that we've reduced it all down, vertical asymptotes make the denominator equal to 0 of the reduced expression, not the original expression. The original expression is your domain, but I'm here wanting to know the denominator, where the denominator would be 0 for my reduced expression. So I'm going to take x minus 4 times x plus 2 and say that that is equal to 0. This means x minus 4 is 0 or x plus 2 is 0. This one, you add 4 to both sides. This one, you'll subtract 2 from both sides. Oop. There we go. So then x is equal to 4, or x is equal to negative 2. There are your vertical asymptotes right there. So I guess I shouldn't say the word or, I should say and. Because so, these are the actual vertical asymptotes. All right, now I'm going to use that to help me graph. Right, so I grab my calculator and I'm going to type in this expression. So now that I know my vertical asymptotes, go to the calculator, go to y equals. And again, I think it's a lot easier if you have this new function ability. So you hit alpha F1 and hit number one, numerator over denominator. And let me just move this over so I can see. And then I'll type 5x in the numerator. Then I'll arrow down and hit x caret 3. Then hit your right arrow to get out of there, minus 2x squared minus 8x. So it should look like that. And then I can hit zoom 6 and this is what it'll look like. And then you just copy that onto your paper right down there.